of Coachella this year. I mean, I love Ariana. She's got bops, major bops. Major, major bops. I love her. But no one was say, calling it Ari Chela, just saying. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Cheats. Today's video, I am going to be talking about this new Sir John XW Beauty range that came out recently. And because Sir John is Beyonce's makeup artist, it actually ties in well with the release of that Netflix homecoming documentary that Beyonce just blessed us with. Uh, so it's gonna be like a chit chat, get ready with me, talking about Beyonce, talking about the documentary, and talking about Sir John and makeup. So it's just gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. If it's your first time here, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. If it's not your first time, welcome back. Great to see you. Always great having you around. And oh, before I start, don't forget, I've got a skincare giveaway going on right now. So you can win some products, including this, the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid. It's just to say thank you, you guys, for being part of a thousand subscribers. Details down below to enter. So the products I bought, I got this palette. Um, this eyeshadow palette, it's got like super cool colors, packaging is great, and this wasn't even like super expensive. So the palette was $2.99, I mean, and this thing has pigment, let me tell you. Full disclaimer, I did try film this video um, a couple of days ago, and I just, like, I don't know what was going on, but I just wasn't feeling it and where it was going and I never want to be the type of person that's like forcing a video out like it must be natural and it must be feeling it so I just took like a little break and we're back I'm ready to film yeah because it just something it just wasn't happening I tried to push through and I was like nah boo bye I have got these four liquid eyeshadows yes this blue one looks popping and then I also got an illuminating stick it's just like a nice little Beyonce glow, hey? So like I said, the reason they're all open and you can see that palettes has been used is because I did try film and my body said no. Nah. But we're back, it's all about the comeback. I wanna start with my eyes today. Just because the last Sir John video I watched, he started with the eyes, so we might as well um, just do what he does. Um, so if you don't know Sir John, he has been Beyonce's makeup artist for a long time, but it's hot. And he also does like people like Joan Small, Priyanka Ch Chopra, Jonas. You see, I got a, I got a full name. Yeah, a few, a few big celebrities. Um, but he is known as Beyonce's makeup artist, and he's given her like some signature looks, including that Coachella look. So today, I'm just gonna play around with this palette, see what it do, what it do. My mom was asked me to do her makeup for a wedding. She's going to. Guys, it's a tough life. But you can't say no. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start off with giving you guys a background on like my journey as a Beyonce supporter. So to be honest, I'm not like in the beehive or anything. I've only ever really pledged my allegiance to one artist or group and that's like a whole K-pop situation. I'm not ready to give my heart fully to something else because you know, these groups break up and things and now you're just left there just being a fan of something that doesn't even exist anymore. So my, my heart's not ready. My heart's not ready to go full into something again. That's a story for another time. My brother was always the big Beyonce fan, like since since Desi's child days. He was there living his best life. He'll buy all these DVDs. He's got like all the Desi's child concert DVDs, Beyonce DVDs. And he'll make us have like, he used to call them screenings. So bear in mind that he would watch it and I'll be around because watching it in the main um, like TV like TV lounge. So I have to watch it because it's there. And the next thing he invites his friends over for a screening of this thing. So now I'm watching it twice. I'm just like over it now because it's just like a lot. And at that point, like I really wasn't like into Beyonce. When I say I'm not wasn't into her, doesn't mean that I didn't think that she was good. I just it just wasn't my. I think at that stage in my life I was going through like indie rock or something. I don't know what I was going through. So he'll have screenings and I'll watch. Like I'll appreciate it. B is like super good at performing. I mean, who's better? Tell me. Still. I was just looking for the lie. Um. So I'll watch that and then in 2003 I was like. I was in seventh grade. We went to Beyonce came for like a Nelson Mandela birthday thing, I think it was. She had just she had just gone solo at that time, I think, yeah. 
So we went to watch her at Gallagher Estate. It's not even like a stadium, guys. Like this was still early days of Beyonce. So this was before like it was like Beyonce, Beyonce. You know, like before before we knew what she could give us. Um, so we went to that. We went early. It was just me and him. I don't know how my parents let us go. Like I was so I was twelve. I had no business being at a concert like that. And he would have been fifteen. I, no, sixteen. So just like kids looking after kids. It was actually amazing. We got to the front, like we, they opened the doors. It's like a convention center. Open the doors and like we ran to the front. Like I had to sit through opening acts and we were like tomorrow day. Ooh. And like a bunch of other people. And then with Beyonce. And now Beyonce has just started. And my 12 year old buddy just couldn't handle the pressure. People pushing me against the barrier. And... I don't know if it was vertigo or something, but I was just like so dizzy. Then I had to tell my brother to like take me to the back and give me water. And he was mad because like he just wanted to see Beyonce, but he did it, shame. He's so sweet. We missed some of the performance, but we came back. Now we're at the back. We were literally like at the front, like on the rail. And then, okay. But we still watched it and enjoyed it. The place wasn't that big, so you could actually see. So it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. So that was great. And I remember her, like, I remember a few of the performances. But yeah, that was like my first concert, I think. B was my first concert, guys. Oh man, how cute. So now fast forward 15 years later, I mean, Beyonce is huge again. Like now I appreciate her more because now she's like Beyonce, Beyonce, like the Beyonce. She's like King Beyonce. Yes, I said King. Five years later, this is now 2018, so last year. So at the beginning of the year, my friends and I were at like my friend Maria's house, just having dinner, it's just like girls night cute we're just talking about guys we think girls is gonna have a con uh, tour this year like it's a, it's about time it's it has to happen and then we're all just saying guys no matter where it is we're going and everyone's like yeah we're going we're going we know it's not gonna be in south africa but wherever it is in europe america it's happening no they are that was like in jan or feb actually it was early in the year fast forward to around march or april i think march there's now like this announcement of On The Run 2, OTR2, so concert with her and Jay-Z. To be honest, I could have done without Jay-Z at the concert, but I mean, it's great. Okay, we're excited, we're like, okay, we're in, we're in, in the group, everyone's in, it's cute. And then they released like the, 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 the cities that they were touring to. You know like when you're organizing a trip with a bunch of people or like plans, like people say like they're in and stuff until it's time and to pay or it's like crunch time. And then people are just like, oh no, I can't, whatever, I can't. But there was like a certain energy in this what in this chat group, and no one, everyone was in it. Everyone was in it. So they released the the cities. I remember someone said, okay, let's make a list of the top three cities you want to go to. So everyone had to type in three cities that were their top three, and we'll choose one from there. And for some reason. Everyone had Paris. It literally just happened. Everyone had Paris in there somewhere, either first, second, or third, but it was on everyone's list. And so we we're going to Paris. And even at this point, like people still could have just been talking, hey? My brother and I were the ones who were gonna try and make the booking. So I'm sitting at work. This is like the middle of the day. And I'm just waiting for these tickets to go online. And we have like our, I think our backup city was LA. So we're literally gonna go anywhere. Like, I mean, Paris, LA, those are two, like, that's a lot. But whatever, we're just gonna make a plan. We asked each other, okay, what's the maximum amount you're willing to pay for this ticket? So we're all expecting to pay, like, I think everyone said about like five grand. Like, they're willing to spend five grand on a ticket for like a nice ticket. Because what's the point of traveling so far and being in the nosebleeds? I'm not trying to be in the nosebleeds. Thank you. It's not time to time to book my brother and i he's in america we're like communicating on whatsapp and then there's like broken languages over the sections we're meant to be booking but we figured it out i still remember it today Pelus or it's like grass or standing i don't know what it meant um so that was the one we we're going for and we managed to both get in i ended up booking a ticket extra by mistake because just in like i just took the most um, the highest amount that you could buy which was four at a time four for each person so we ended up both clicking on four instead of um booking seven in total booked eight but like i actually wasn't even worried i was like you know what i really don't care we got the tickets and they were like 1.7 1.6 so it actually wasn't even like bad and these were good <laughs> 
I might even throw in a clip of this concert to show you guys that we were close enough. Like, we were close. For one six, huh, any day. Yeah, everything got booked, and not every, everyone paid on time. Like, as soon as it was booked, the money came to my brother and I. Like, there was no, like, shenanigans about people not paying and all that jazz. It was just a seamless process, and that's how I knew that this is going to be a good time because everyone was in it everyone paid because that's the commitment that you need so fast forward to july 2018 we are in paris oh it was such a good trip the concert was it was really amazing i will i'll definitely throw in some clips that i if i can still find them i switch phones and anyway i'll talk about that phone situation in the story actually it all just ties in Beyonce was there, I was here. It was great, it was great. Our feet were done, man. Oh, whoo, whoo, whoo. we were, oof. But it was worth it. Some Jay-Z moments, though. But I appreciate them, but I, I, didn't, I didn't fly to Paris for Jay-Z, I flew for Beyonce. In 2018, she had Coachella, and she had On The Run 2. My sister-in-law went to Coachella, she loved it. Like, my friends and I, we watched it at home when she came to my house. We had like a Coachella screening in the morning. It was, it was very early in the morning. It was it was awesome. Like you could tell that this was going to be a historic performance. And it really, truly was. There was something about it. It was just like, it was just like black. I don't know what else to say. It. And just like, it was powerful. It was everything. It was really, really everything. And it just made us more excited for On The Run 2 in Paris and it was great. The 2nd of December, 2018, there was now the Global Citizen Concert. They had one in America and then they're trying to like do stuff in Africa and South Africa was the first country and Beyonce is the headliner. Did we not see Beyonce twice in one year? I mean, come on somebody. Hey? Oh, no man. Yeah, no, it was a good show. Um, it was really good. At some point during one of like the in-between video moments, yeah, just before formation, go to the bathroom. I got mugged. My phone was gone. This is how I say the phone ties into the story. So now my phone is stolen. I come back to like our seats and I'm just like, there's formation, there's Paris playing, which is like my favorite song. So it kind of just ruined the rest of the concert for me. Like, you know when you're standing there and just, you're trying to fake your way through it, but you actually just, you actually want to get home. Now we're in 2019. It's been a bit quiet in terms of Beyonce-isms, you know. We weren't really expecting anything from her. Like, let, let, let our friend rest, you know. So we see that there's this Netflix documentary coming out called Homecoming. And it's like behind the scenes of Coachella. Beachella. Let's not get it to Speaking of Coachella this year. I mean, I love Ariana. She's got bops, major bops. Major, major bops. I love her. But no one was say, calling it Arichella, just saying. It was just a quiet year for Coachella in general. Barely even saw the looks on my Instagram. Like, it was just, I don't know if everyone is just over it this year. Like, what's happening? Do people have bigger things to worry about? <sighs> but that, that ain't not my business. So my friend and I decided to watch it here, just with a glass of champopo, champagne. We even had like actual champagne, guys, not, not the sparkling wine stuff. Just, you know, to celebrate the moment and pizza, so it was just all good, sat down, watched it, and just from the get-go, the quality of the production was awesome. The first major, cause like, you know in Coachella, she had two weekends, and the first weekend she was wearing the pink outfit, no, yellow outfit, second weekend was the pink outfit, and at the beginning of the show, of the documentary, 
she starts off by showing like the performance like the first part of the performance and then there's a moment when they switch from like the yellow to the pink in the dance oh no it was we knew we were in for a time we just knew that this was gonna be so 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 great um so we watched and then later on my other friend Puleng and my sister Chibet came to join us and we're just we're just vibing over our beyonce isn't like i said i was never really like I, like i'm not i'm not in the beehive like i don't know when beyonce's birthday is i don't know sometimes i get the kids names confused like i'm not like that in but I appreciate her like for what she does for us and like for the performances because some of these other girls some of these other girls <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about that it was great like there's just like inspirational quotes and voices and just but I think my takeaways were let's start with just HBCUs so the whole thing about the whole theme of it um, was like celebrating HBCUs, which are historically black colleges. That's like the whole like band situation, the drum line, um, what she was wearing, the Greek letters. And as having lived in South Africa, I'm South African, I mean, we, 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 don't, we don't have HBCUs here. So I never, I mean, I always got the importance of them like on a general level but I think after watching homecoming her explaining it and showing how cool they are I definitely appreciate them more now um, I mean if we have them here that's where I'll be at it does make you like want to go to an HBCU and experience all the culture and just the blackness because black is cool um, so yeah, I really appreciated it on that level. That was my first takeaway from the documentary itself. Because I mean, yeah, from the performance, from watching Coachella, I could pick that up, that this is about HBCUs. But when she also spoke about it and how she wanted to go, but she couldn't because she's been performing for us since she was a kid and couldn't go to college. Her co the stage was her college. Um, definitely did make me appreciate them more and understand the appeal and why you would want to go there. My other takeaway would be just hearing about her difficult birth, giving birth to her twins, how they weren't like expecting that and how she got quite ill, preeclampsia and stuff. Like Beyonce always chooses how much she wants to let us know. It's always nice when we get to see another layer of her, like the more I don't want to say the more human level because I mean she's always been a human but you know what I mean like she's like someone who a lot of us just unconsciously put on the pedal pedestal on the pedal on the pedestal and we forget that she actually is just a normal person like dealing with normal stuff like dealing with difficult childbirth and stuff like that so it was great to see like her talk about that and hearing her story I mean I I don't have kids so I mean, I don't know much about childbirth, but I know that it ain't easy. And I know that having like, even one kid and working, like when I see my friends, like it's hard. Um, so her doing what she did and like practicing for this Coachella thing for eight months and just having given birth. So she's got two little kids that need her. She's got like a, um, another child who's also growing that also needs her. So it's, it's actually a lot. But you want to spend your days also rehearsing. I mean, I don't know how she does it all. I mean, I barely just get through work and that's just the basics of life. Okay, this is a lot of coverage. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Ray 24. Infallible 24 hour Fresh Ray. I've really been enjoying this foundation recently. I think this eye look. First, I wasn't feeling, I was like, what did I do here? Let's actually come together. Okay, so next takeaway would be, I guess, linked to the childbirth story how she got her like her body back together and her health guys i struggle just going to the gym three times a week i won't even lie like sometimes i'm just about get reaching my vitality goal and then i'm out but seeing her work hard and you see the journey from where she had like the post-birth um weight gain to getting because to perform like that guys that's actually like being an athlete to be able to 
have that much endurance and stamina. It's not just about having like a muscle, we don't get a muscle, but it's actually about stamina and you actually have to work up properly and exercise and diet. When she talked about a diet, she said like, what did she say? No dairy, no sugar, no alcohol, no, no carbs, no, no meat, no fish. When she said no fish, I was like, fish? Fish? Like so do what? Drake? <laughs> Drake? At what point did fish not work on a diet? Because they always tell you to eat a lot of fish. And I mean, I don't even like fish, but the fact that she couldn't even eat <laughs> Guys, you have to get your body tight and right. Who's hooting? Like, I was like, yeah, no, who hoots? Because I really have to do my mother's makeup. Anyway, and then she would, when she was just like trying to get into, when she's trying to get her fitness back, and she's like, she, this probably she mentions, well, I want to be able to do soul cycle stairs and rehearse in one day. Just the soul cycle for me, I'm already just. <laughs> I'm out, I'm KO for the rest of the day because thank you, we're done. Sir John is actually the one who taught me about, I mean, not me directly, like it wasn't a one-on-one, -on -one, but I went to a masterclass, a Woolies masterclass with him, like last year or two years ago. He swears by layering up the mascara. So if you're not into falsies, like I'm not really into them. Well, I'm not into putting them on because it's just a mission. Layer up your mascara and you can get a similar effect. Just a little bit of translucent powder, not too much. We're just going for like, like skin. Oh yeah, back to homecoming. My mom's not ready, so. So another thing, I guess the general theme of coach, of, of Beachella, um, I mean, yeah, it's about HBCUs, but it's, it's about just being, like embracing our blackness, guys. Like, it's not that I've never, it's not that I've never not been proud of being black, but it makes you more proud, if that makes sense. Like it makes you embrace it more. Like it, it, you realize how cool we actually are in our culture and just like our rhythm and just like the soul. Like we're actually just, sometimes people make you forget. That's actually one thing that I, that I do want to promote with my channel. Um, and it's by no means trying to alienate other other races or anything like we love everyone rainbow nation but we don't see a lot of representation of ourselves in music on on tv and movies even on youtube guys like so just seeing her celebrating our coolness and our culture and although it was a lot of like the hbcus are very it's very american um but it's, it's just about the general feeling, you know, you know, not just not just what kind of forever, and like just everything we've got. I don't know what I'm even saying, but it was it was really cool to see that. Um, so I'm gonna use let me use this Bobby Brown foundation stick. Um, actually, first I wasn't too into this because I bought it as a contour, but afterwards I realized that it's not as dark as I was used to. But at the same time, now I'm actually like really feeling it because I think I don't want like that extra hard contour anymore. This is just like, gives more color, just some warmth. It's actually what I'm gonna be about in 2019. See how that just brought everything together. It just added some depth and dimension, but not like someone was just carving out my skin. Then I'm gonna use the Sir John Illuminating Stick. Just nice and sun-kissed. Cause I've been really enjoying the new one from NYX. So I thought, let me, let me try this. It's not as smooth, like as creamy as the next one, but let's see. Just gonna have to blend it out. Okay, I can hear my mom, I feel like she's ready now. I'm coming. And just the fact that it took her eight months to prepare for Coachella, cause that's just dedication. Your kids are growing. You've got your mans. You know, there's a lot of things. You've got other concerts in between. It's a lot. You're touring. Oh, if she can do it, guys, we can all do it. We can actually all do it. That's what I got. It just made me, in general, to sum up watching Homecoming, it just made me want to do better for myself and improve myself and work hard, especially at things that I want, like this channel. Just made me want to push through, like the times when I'm just tired, but just push through 
Um, and don't do something that, try, well try not, I know sometimes it's hard, try not to get stuck into things that you don't want to do. Like, because you actually won't be able to do that well. This just made me want to pursue, I mean I've got my 9 to 5, but maybe want to pursue things that I want. Just strive for more and just be a like awesome woman, girl power, black woman. You can do whatever you want to do. Because I'm actually really liking this look. I'm so into this. And this is the finished look. I'm so glad I redid this video because it all just came together. I really so let me actually talk about the products. I actually really like this palette. The, the shades are so like pigmented. I used a combo of like this one, this one, just some of this gray, like gunmetal, whatever, and a little bit of that. And I also used that in conjunction with this gray liquid eyeshadow. And I actually really like this look. It's like it's not too much, it's like a little bit shimmery, there's something going on under there, it's just like, you don't know what's going on, but it's nice and just like a bit sultry. And I really do like the illuminating stick, where is it? For some reason I can't find it now, but y'all saw me using it. This is something, good. something, something. Um, but I also really like the illuminating stick. Um, so overall I actually really like this range. I wasn't, the other stuff that um, was in the range that I didn't get were brushes. I really don't need like other brushes. And um, what else? There was some nail polish and there was also, there was another illuminating powder, but I figured if I'm getting the stick, I don't really need the powder. And I like the shine of the stick better and the lipstick, but it didn't really work for my skin tone. So I just left that. It wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna do any, any good for me. Overall, I really like this look and I really loved Homecoming and my Beyonce standing is increasing. I think at some point we'll get there, but I just need to deal with my K-pop issues first and then maybe one day I'll be ready to jump jump ship and move on to the Beehive. Because guys, I'm a hardcore so on. Has for all the so ons out there, I feel you. I feel you. We'll be strong. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, guys. Please, please, please try to increase that number. Thank you, guys, if you have already subscribed. And like I said, I do have a little giveaway, a little skincare giveaway to celebrate hitting just over a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much. So details down below, and you can stand a chance of winning these awesome prizes. And make sure your skin is popping. So, guys, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. While you're here, here's some other videos for you guys to watch. Just and thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm gonna always try and be as genuine as I can. No pushing content when it's not needed. Cheers, guys. Have a good week and watch Homecoming. Bye.